Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's live IELTS class, broadcasting to you from Budapest, Hungary. My name is Adrian, and I am going to teach you task one letter writing today on February 21st. Hi, Kyber. Hi, Tim. Wesley Ryan. All right. As usual, our materials come from our websites, G help.com for general IELTS. And if you're learning for academic IELTS, visit us at aehelp.com where we have six full original practice exams, audio, over 100 hours of video, and a fully interactive course for your phone, tablet, and PC. So you can learn anywhere, anytime. Hi, Prashil. All right, students. So today, some letter writing. Tomorrow, we will do general reading strategy and practice. And then on Saturday, some task to essay focus. Let's get into the question of today. Again, the materials, they come from our websites. This is our academic website here with the blue background. Join that, click that big red button at aehelp.com. And for general IELTS, go to this website with the green background, gieltshelp.com. Click that big red button and join us there. Let's take a look at the task one question of today. This is coming from one of our exams. Here we go. Writing task one, you should spend about 20 minutes on this task. You want to get a refund on a gym membership. Write a letter to the administrator of the gym. In your letter, describe who you are at the gym. Describe why you want to refund your membership. Explain the importance of the situation. Write at least 100 50 words. Students, uh, the task says write at least 150 words. That means you have to write minimum 150 words. If you write less than 150 words, you will start losing uh, points, okay? So try to reach that 150 word minimum, okay? Very important. All right. So, what should we do? You get to the writing section, your one hour time starts. Okay, you have one hour for task one, task two. They don't tell you when the 20 minutes is up. It's up to you to correctly uh, divide your time, 20 minutes for task one and 40 minutes for task two. So make sure you practice that at home. Uh, what should I do? I read the question first. Now what do I do? What's my next step? Okay, well, the first step is visualize it, okay? So plan your response. You have to have some good ideas before you begin writing. Don't just start writing, okay? Take about two minutes to plan your answer for this letter. So let's talk about planning this response. Here we go. So always plan first, okay? Never just start writing. Okay, so step one, plan your letter, okay? Visualize. So here you need to uh, get a refund, get your money back for your gym membership, okay? The best way is ask questions before you think of answers. So think of some important questions in connection to the description of task one. Okay, that's your first step. So think about questions. So visualize, see the situation. Okay, think about important questions in connection to the task. So here the example is what kind of a question? So what question 
would be good to ask. So if I read this, write a letter to the administrator of the gym, okay? Describe who you are at the gym, describe why you want a refund, explain the importance of the situation, okay? So what's a good question to ask here, okay? What's a good question? What are common reasons for wanting a refund? Okay, so think about what are the most common reasons people want to get a refund on their gym membership? And what's the answer? Okay, Shanze, very good. So Shanze says health condition, uh, moving to another city maybe, or a uh, job transfer. Okay, now Shanze, that's great. Obviously, you do not want to use all three of those. Uh, so let's go with the first one. I think all three of those were top level ideas. I think a lot of people would think about that, Shanze. Um, so let's go with the first one. So it could be... Uh, Health condition, moving to another city, okay? So those would be the two top ones. Let's choose health condition. Okay, so what kind of a health condition would be uh, a common situation where somebody would say, hey, I need a refund on my gym membership, okay? So again, still asking questions, right? What health condition uh, to get a refund? Okay, that was a good good answer, Shanze. Health condition, I was thinking the same. That would be a very common reason to say, hey, sorry, but I can't go to the gym. I can't do physical exercise. What would be a common health condition where somebody would be like, okay, I have to take a break. I can't go to the gym. Prashil says muscle issue. Uh, the goal is keep your answers simple. Prashil, muscle issue, what do you mean? Shanze, very good. Again, a broken leg, okay? Keep it simple. So your answer for task one shouldn't be something super unique that's difficult to write about. Just choose common ideas and write about them nicely or write about them well in complex ways. A broken leg, Shanze, is, it's not, I don't want to say that's good, but it's a good idea, okay? I know because I had a broken leg last year, so. Um, okay, so what health condition? A broken leg. All right, good. So now, we have a very critical part of the information, which is the broken leg. So we visualize this now. And again, practicing this at home, it should happen quickly, all right? So when you read the questions on the card, immediately you think, okay, what are good questions? Visualize it. What are common answers for wanting money back from the gym? Broken leg, okay, it's good, all right. Hi, Omar, how are you doing? All right, so far, so good. Uh, now, let's go back to the original question. So, we want to describe who we are, okay? Uh, describe why we want our refund. So, now we know it's a health condition. We have a broken leg, okay? And explain the importance of this situation. So, why do I want to get my money back, okay? So, if I got this far, that I know that I need money back because of a health condition, a broken leg, then I can go to my next question and go, why is, it, why is this important? Why is getting my money back important? Okay. So what can I tell this manager? Good, Omar. I'm happy you're doing great. I know you're a positive guy, so that's good. Um, so why is it important? Why do I need to get my money back? Okay, again, Simple thoughts, quick thinking, okay? Good planning, your band score will be higher, all right? So, uh, why do I want my money back? Again, think simple, ladies and gents. Keep it simple. So, why would I want my money back? Think about that broken leg. Hi, AJ. 
Yeah, Shenzhen, you're saying you want to cancel your membership. Yeah, okay, we that's for sure, right? So that's the, the key here is get the money back, cancel the membership. Why? I have a broken leg. I can't work out. I'm in pain. I'm on painkillers. Doctor said don't go to the gym for at least two months. Sure, there's an expiry. Why do I need money? Um, yeah, Pachu, you can do a mind map process. Absolutely. Yeah, it's kind of what I'm doing here. It's a type of flow map uh, with these arrows, Pachu. So um, what are the most common reasons people want to get a refund for their gym membership? Change in health or health condition moving to another location. What health condition? A broken leg. Okay, why do I want to get my money back? Think about it. You just broke your leg. Why do you need money? Keep it simple because you have medical bills, okay? You need to pay for medicine. You need to pay the doctor and you're not working as much because you have a broken leg, okay? So why is it important? Need money for uh, bills, medical bills and not working as much, right? So those would be some uh, very good reasons for that. Omar, absolutely, utilizing the money for medical treatment. Okay, good, so now we have some good ideas, all right? So now when we look at the original question, we need to write this letter to the administrator of the gym. In our letter, we describe who we are, describe why we want our money back, and we want to explain the importance of the situation. Good, okay, now we're ready to begin our letter. So how should we start the letter? Okay, the letter is going to have three parts or three paragraphs. We begin the letter with dear something something. Okay, what is that something something? And then for the first part, we want to state who we are. And the purpose of the letter. Okay. That's what we want to do for part one, okay, or the first paragraph. Tejvir, I'm happy you're learning lots from me. That's great. Make sure to practice too, okay? Practice what you learn. Again, students, I can make it look easy for you here and go through the steps and the motions, but it's up to you to really do the practice and the work at home, all right? So how do I start my letter, okay? If there's no dear sir or dear madam, if it's just dear something, uh, how should I begin for this specific context? Yeah, thank you, Shanze. Dear gym administrator. Okay, good. Uh, Pachu says, I want to refund my $600 membership. Sure, good use of quantitative language. We'll get that into the first paragraph. All right. Great feedback, students. Good job. So, dear Jim, and you know what? If you have the chance, if you don't have to start with dear sir, if you have the chance, uh, then uh, be creative. Give it a name, okay? Make it more specific. So, dear gold Jim administration or administrator. Both will be okay in this case, okay? Uh, it's always good to start with who you are, okay? So who are you, all right? Who are you? Introduce yourself, okay? Start with who you are. So it's actually this sequence that I've written here for uh, paragraph one. So for the first paragraph of your letter, you should start by saying who you are because it's important for the reader to know who are you, who, who's... Uh, trying to give me information or ask me a question, okay? So what's a good way to introduce yourself? Again, the question is in the stream description, students, all right? So we're writing a letter to the administrator of the gym. In the letter, we're describing who we are at the gym. It even asks you for that. So in this very first step, we're completing this requirement. Okay, Shanze says, I've been a jubilant member of Fitness First Club 
for more than a year with full access multi-club membership. Shanze, very nice. Nice English. I have to give it to you. You're really getting the hang of the ideas and the strategies that I'm uh, uh, giving to you using that quantitative, qualitative information, using specific details, giving names. That's how you get band eight, band nine, Shanze, just like that. Okay. Uh, Mubashir says, this is Mubashir, one of the members of your gym. Mubashir, yeah, it's a good start. Okay, so yeah, I'm a member of your gym. Uh, include colorful descriptive language. Okay, so when you're at home, always practice colorful descriptive language. So I am a patron of your gym for the past two years, okay? So let's say you start at home with a simple sentence like this, all right? Now, stretch, expand your sentence with more description, okay? So I can say, I am a loyal patron, okay? Loyal is a good word to put before patron. Patron is another way to say customer. Loyal meaning that you are a regular customer. Okay, so I am a loyal patron of your gym for the past two years. Sure. And give more information. Add a little bit further description. Okay, uh, use a coordinating conjunction. And, but, nor, for, so. Here, let's use and. And I work out every uh, morning from 8 to 9 a.m., Monday through Saturday. Okay, so a little bit more description, giving a little bit more for who you are and using that quantitative language. Numbers help your communication to be clearer, right? So it's okay when you're practicing task one at home to start simple, I'm a patron of your gym, and then stretch it. I'm a loyal patron of your gym. I'm a loyal patron of your gym for the past two years. I'm a loyal patron of your gym for the past two years, and I work out every morning from 8 to 9 a.m., Monday through Saturday. Okay, and then now, of course, we introduce why we're writing this letter. Okay, so unfortunately, due to an unexpected circumstance, I am writing to request a refund of my most recent one-year membership purchase in the amount of $600, okay? So I'm connecting using a word that allows me to connect and begin the other sentence, right? It's an opening expression here or a starting expression. Unfortunately, due to an unexpected circumstance, comma, this is the dependent clause, due to an unexpected circumstance, I'm writing to request a refund of my most recent one-year membership purchase in the amount of $600, okay? Very clear information about what I am intending with my letter, what I want my letter to achieve, all right? So that's what goes in to uh, the first paragraph. Hussein, don't stress. If you've written the exam, it is what it is. They already have your results. Just wait for it, okay? Shanze says, I have paid all my dues and security deposit, but now I regret to inform you that I can no longer continue my membership in the club due to my health condition. Shanze, that's good too. Yeah, okay, so it's the same idea. You're giving a different, but also a very good 
uh, second sentence for paragraph one. Absolutely. So we're stating who we are and the purpose of the letter. Uh, Shanze, uh, remember to include that you're looking for a refund. So in that first part, it should say somewhere that I need a refund. Okay. Yeah, I can see that you've written that now. Farheen says, and I am taking my fitness more seriously. I'm working out every morning and satisfied with the facilities. Unfortunately, I met with an accident and I want a refund uh, for the one year which I paid for in advance. Farheen, the beginning is very good. Nice use of the word uh, met with an accident. That's a, a common English expression, so met with an accident. Just the last part, Farheen, uh, and I want a refund for the one year membership, which I have paid for in advance. That's the correct way, Farheen, to state that. Okay, so pay attention to that correction for the second part of it. Okay, good. So now we have uh, the first paragraph. It's great. It's done. We can go into the second one. The second paragraph is more detailed. It describes exactly what's happening. And here, what do you think we should continue with in paragraph two? So paragraph two, give detailed information, explanation, and example for the information or the introduction you provided in the first part. Okay. Um, so what should I do now? What should I write in paragraph two? Okay. How should I continue? Well, here in my example, I don't actually say what happened to me. So it makes sense to go into a little bit of detail. Okay. How can I do that? Give me some details. Okay. We probably want the uh, gym administrator to sympathize with us, means share mutual feelings. So we probably want to explain what exactly happened. How did we break our leg? Okay. Uh, what is a common way for people to break their leg? Okay, so what would be a way that people commonly break their leg? Well, I'm from Canada, so as you can guess, for me, in my neck of the woods, it's often uh, associated with, uh, for example, skiing or snowboarding. Uh, in fact, I broke my leg last year playing floor hockey. Shanzi says, last week I slipped and fell on the wet floor in my bathroom. Okay, yeah, that works too. Sure, yeah, slipping uh, on a wet surface absolutely will work. Okay, so I've already used the word unfortunately, so I don't want to use that. Um, last week... when I was last week I slipped in the bathroom and landed in an awkward <clears throat> way breaking my left leg in the process. Okay, sure. All right, Farheen says, when I was returning home from work, a motor vehicle hit me and flew away. Okay, Farheen, we wouldn't say flew away, drove away, maybe. Okay, so it was a hit and run. It's called a hit and run accident. Um, yeah, it's possible. So a vehicle, motor vehicle accident would be another way, sure. Or slipping down the stairs at the workplace, like Samit Kaur says, that's possible as well. 
Okay. Yeah. So last week I slipped in the bathroom and landed in an awkward way, breaking my left leg in the process. Needless to say, it was extremely painful and I'm a bit embarrassed by this situation. Okay, some nice natural flowing language. Mubashir says, when I was walking on the road the other day, a car drove up on the footpath and ran over my leg. Okay, ran over my leg and broke it, Mubashir. So one more time, Mubashir. When I was walking on the road the other day, okay, let's go one more time. When I was walking on the sidewalk the other day, a car ran up on the path drove over my leg and broke it. That's the correct way, Mubashir. All right, Shenzi says, I'm in a critical condition according to the doctor's advice and I cannot take part in any form of exercise until full recovery. Okay. Uh, Carlos Martinez, good question. So Carlos says, can I explain this needless to say? Okay. Uh, needless to say, Carlos, means obviously or clearly. Is an expression which means clearly or obviously. Let's put it up here in the notes. It's kind of a common way to express this. Okay, so it means clearly or obviously. Yeah, students, if you see a new expression or a new grammar structure that I'm using, absolutely ask me. I'm happy to explain it. Okay, if you have a question, somebody else might have a question as well. All right, so just ask. That's why I'm here. All right, uh, so needless to say, it was extremely painful and I'm a bit embarrassed by this situation. Shunzi had a good idea with explaining how long it will take for me to recover. So I should say that, right? Making it clear why I can't go back to the gym. Um, after consulting with my doctor, the leg or my leg uh, requires at least 10 weeks of recovery and I am uh, instructed not to participate in any serious physical activity until I fully recover. All right. Again, using uh, subordinating conjunctions here, I'm using a subordinating conjunction of time, okay? So after consulting with my doctor, this sets me up for a complex sentence. If you want to get a high IELTS band score, you need to show that you can use complex sentences accurately and subordinating conjunctions accurately, okay? Uh, embarrassed means that you feel shy and bad about the situation. This is for Harpreet Singh. Okay. All right. Um, don't jump to considering the situation. I humbly request you to cancel my membership at the club just yet, Shanze. We need to include something more here. Okay. So let's keep going. Okay. After consulting with my doctor, my leg requires at least 10 weeks of recovery and I'm instructed not to participate in any physical activities until I fully recover. Notice my quantitative information, 10 weeks. Okay. Use that. Uh, I have a missing comma in this sentence. Where is my comma missing? Can anybody tell me that? And what should I write about next? For students who are just coming into the class, you can see the question in the stream description, okay? 
So I'm missing a comma in this sentence. Tell me where it needs to go. And uh, also, what should I write next? Omar, good man. Yes, absolutely. Before the end. And I bet you know why. Just remember, students, when you're joining two full sentences together with the word and, you should have a comma before. So I'm instructed not to participate in physical activity. That's a full sentence, okay? Um, my leg requires at, le at least 10 weeks to recover is a full sentence. So if I join this full sentence with this full sentence using the word and, it has to have a comma before it, okay? And remember, students, that there's a space after commas, always, okay? So the comma is before the end when you're joining two full sentences. Good. Okay, and what do I need to write about next? So what should I continue on with? Okay, what should be my next sentence here? If you are a little bit lost, don't panic. Just look at the question again, okay? So here's the question, who you are. Describe why you want the refund of your membership. We're doing that. Explain the importance of the situation. So what am I missing? What should I continue with? No, I don't need the waiting for reply yet, Farheen. I'm still missing information. And you don't just need to write 150 words, students, for task one. You need to have task completion, okay? Task completion means that you need to answer all of the parts of that question clearly. What am I missing here? Well, remember the planning as well, right? So we said... I need the refund because of a health condition. It's my broken leg. And then we ask, why is that money important for us? Well, the money is important for us, obviously, because we need to pay medical bills and we're not working as much. All right. So we have to include that. So we have to say that, hey, look, I need this money back because I have to pay medical bills. Farheen, what you're writing is coming at the end of the letter. Okay, it's at the end of the letter. You're not finished the body paragraph of the letter yet. If I look right now, students, um, let me show you how the word count looks. So if I look at the introduction, the introduction, this part right here, uh, actually, that's too much, just a second. Um, okay, so this is, this is the first part of the letter, okay? It tells the person who I am and the purpose of my letter. That one so far is 53 words, okay, which is about right. So that's about how much you want for that first paragraph. It's fit. So here it's 53 words. That's our word count, okay? Now for paragraph two, so far we have 63 words, okay? So until this point, we have 63 words. 53 plus 63 is 116. That's nowhere near enough for task completion yet. We need to write at least another 20 to 30 words into this body paragraph, okay? So we need to answer the question of why is it important? All right, so Farheen says, I hope you understand my situation for paying bills. Okay, sure, that's okay. Uh, join it with ideas as well, Farheen. So as you can imagine. So as you can likely imagine, get into it. Get into the situation that you're discussing, okay, for... Task one, uh, general IELTS for this letter, you have to be creative, okay? You have to be imaginative. So keep it simple, but be creative, all right? As you can likely imagine, I am having to pay for expensive 
medical bills, such as pain medication and Okay, here's a bonus question uh, in this context. What do you call in English those sticks that you put under your arm so that you can move around with a broken uh, leg? What do you call that? So, you know, those, uh, those long sticks and when somebody breaks their leg or injures their leg so they can hobble around. Ah, Shanze, some good vocabulary. Yeah, they're called crutches. I think there's a missing C there. Yeah, crutches, crutches, Tim Wesley Ryan, very good, okay. All right, uh, some neat cover says, this refund is really important for me because I need to pay medical bills. Presently, I am not working because of the bed rest advice. Very good, some neat, that's some good writing there as well. So as you can likely imagine, I'm having to pay for expensive medical bills such as pain medication and crutches. I don't know how to spell that because I never write that word as I am not a doctor, but I'll check the spelling on it. Crutches. There we go. So pain medication and crutches. Furthermore, right? Um, or what's better to write than furthermore? What's an even more powerful way to connect this. Furthermore, I am unable to work for the next three weeks as I am uh, bedridden. Okay, what's a better way uh, for this particular sentence? I'm unable to work for the next three weeks as I am bedridden. Uh, instead of furthermore, there's an English expression that could go really well in this kind of situation. Can anybody guess uh, what that is? I'll give you a hint. It starts with to make. And there's two words missing here. Anybody know what those two missing words are? To make something something, I am unable to work for the next three weeks as I am bedridden. Again, that missing comma here after weeks because I'm joining two sentences, okay? So what are the two missing words for this expression? Anybody? It's a common one. Let's see if you can get it. And then we'll go on to the next part. You can almost feel the uh, cogs of your brain twisting and turning and thinking and trying to figure out what is that expression. The expression is, maybe somebody's getting it while I'm writing this, to make matters worse. Okay, so that's what it is. Close, sun meat, situation, not situation, it's matters, okay? So to make matters worse, I am unable to work for the next three weeks as I am bedridden. Therefore, my funds are running low. Okay, or will be running low. All right. Great, so now that body paragraph is looking a lot better with that complete information, okay? All right, so now I can write my third uh, paragraph. In the third paragraph, I need to wrap up uh, the letter. So wrap up the letter. And what do you need to include? Include the request and feedback. That's usually what it is. So what the goal of your letter is. So include the goal and hopefully getting some sort of feedback, right? So some kind of a response in some way. 
So include the request or the goal. Again, strengthen the goal. And then get some feedback. All right. So let's do that. Okay. So how can we do that? I gave you a couple of words uh, throughout the lesson that are very useful for this. So we're summarizing the letter, Pachu. Yes, that's absolutely uh, another way to perceive this. Our goal here is to try to get that money back. Okay. So how can I write this? Write me some example uh, sentences to begin my summary. Let's uh, read what I have so far. Maybe that will help you, especially if you just joined in. So here we go. We're starting from here. I'm a loyal patron of your gym for the past two years, and I work out every morning from 8 to 9 a.m. Monday through Saturday. Unfortunately, due to an unexpected circumstance, I'm writing to request a refund of my most recent one-year membership purchase in the amount of $600. Last week, I slipped in the bathroom and landed in an awkward way, breaking my left leg in the process. Needless to say, it was extremely painful and I'm a bit embarrassed by this situation. After consulting with my doctor, my leg requires at least 10 weeks of recovery and I'm instructed not to participate in any serious physical activity until I fully recover. As you can likely imagine, I'm having to pay for expensive medical bills such as pain medication and crutches. To make matters worse, I'm unable to work for the next three weeks as I am bedridden. Therefore, my funds will be running low very soon. Okay, so how do I write that third paragraph? What do I do there? I'm absolutely summarizing. How do I do it? All right. Pachu, I can see your response. So Pachu says, all in all, considering my situation, you will do me a great favor to return my membership and help my financial circumstance. Okay, Pachu, notice the addition of words and corrections there. So one more time, Pachu. All in all, considering my situation, you will do me a great favor. Okay, is the correct way to express that, Pachu. You will do me a correct favor, favor in returning my membership fee. Okay, subscription fee of gym membership is weird, Pachu. It's a lot of repetition. We don't say subscription. Okay. Samnit says, I hope you understand my situation and start the refund process as soon as possible. Okay, Samnit, that's good. Instead of saying, I hope you understand my situation, what's a higher level vocabulary to express that? I hope you understand. I use that word a couple of times uh, in this lesson today. So instead of saying, I hope you understand... What's a higher level vocabulary? Because lexical resource is important. You can get a seven uh, without using very rare words, but using some specific English words to show lexical resource is a good idea if you have it. So if I feel the same as another person or if I feel for the other person, what's another way to say that? The word starts with an S. Uh, Mubashir, that's a little bit repetitive. You've already said that before. You don't need to say it again. So I wouldn't use as I mentioned before because it's it's a short letter. I know what you wrote. It's fine. You already said you're a loyal patron. You already said it's $600. So I wouldn't repeat that. Omar Al-Najjar, very good. Sympathize. Yeah, the word is sympathize, students. So <clears throat> here we go. I truly hope that you can sympathize. So ask for sympathy, okay? Sympathy means a mutual shared feeling, all right? So I hope that you can sympathize with my situation and refund my payment in full. This will be of great help and here, what can I say to encourage the manager 
to give me a refund. Okay, so think about that, all right? Uh, it's good to train your thinking, your communication, along with your English skills when you are practicing for this letter writing in task one. And as I've said in previous uh, task one classes, you should try to think with the mind of your reader. So here your reader is the owner or the manager of the gym, right? What can I say to the owner or the manager of a gym to increase my chances of getting a refund? And general IELTS, I mean, a lot of you students are doing this because you want to immigrate and move to countries like Canada, United States. And these are very real situations. People try to get their gym membership back all the time, I know. Uh, and uh, it's good to practice for when you actually have to use this type of letter in real life. So it's good that you're learning the culture of this as well. So what can I say here to increase the chances of this administrator, owner, or manager of the gym to give me my money back. So I truly hope that you can sympathize with my situation and refund my payment in full or my membership in full. This will be of great help and what? And what? What goes in there? Yeah, Grace, Cacao, very good. Okay, that's thinking with the mind of the reader. So students, if you're looking at the chat there, you'll see Grace, Cacao, saying, as soon as I get back in shape, I will surely uh, go back to the gym and continue my routine. Absolutely, especially since you need to strengthen that broken leg, right? Of course. So this will be of great help. And I will surely be returning to the gym uh, following my recovery to strengthen, to continue my regular routine and strengthen my freshly healed leg, right? Absolutely. So if you have quick, quality, good thinking, you can come up with information like that, and that will help you to push that band score higher, okay? Um, I hope to hear from you soon. Either by mail or phone. One, two, three, one, zero, one, one, three, something like that, okay? Maybe put in a couple dashes so it looks like a phone number of sorts. Uh, there we go. And then you're done. And now just simple for this one. Don't do anything special. Simply just best regards. Okay, John Smith. Okay, and usually there's a comma here. And now you're done. Of course, when you're practicing for the IELTS at home, you're not done yet because you should always take one final step, which is read the question, read your response, and make sure that you've met all of the requirements, okay? So let's do that together. Here we go. Okay, one more time. Write a letter to the administrator of the gym. Okay, you want to get a refund on a gym membership. In your letter, describe who you are at the gym. Describe why you want to refund your membership. Explain the importance of this situation. So think about all that. We did some great planning, right? We visualized the situation, so we pictured it. We thought about the most uh, common uh, reasons for this kind of uh, occurrence or event. We realized that a health condition is a common reason for it. The health condition could be a broken leg. So we thought, hey, that's a great idea. Why not use that? And then we need money for medical bills. All right. So we begin our letter with Dear Gold Gym Administrator. I'm a loyal patron of your gym for the past two years, and I work out every morning from 8 to 9 a.m. Monday through Saturday. 
Unfortunately, due to an unexpected circumstance, I'm writing to request a refund of my most recent one-year membership purchase in the amount of $600. Last week, I slipped in the bathroom and landed in an awkward way, breaking my left leg in the process. Needless to say, it was extremely painful and I'm a bit embarrassed by this situation. After consulting with my doctor, my leg requires at least 10 weeks of recovery and I'm instructed not to participate in any serious physical activity until I fully recover. As you can likely imagine, I'm having to pay for expensive medical bills such as pain medication and crutches. To make matters worse, I'm unable to work for the next three weeks as I am bedridden. Therefore, my funds will be running low very soon. I truly hope that you can sympathize with my situation and refund my membership in full. This will be of great help and I will surely be returning to the gym following my recovery to continue my regular routine and strengthen my freshly healed leg. I hope to hear from you soon, either by mail or phone. Best regards, John Smith. Fantastic. It's about 200 words, maybe. Let me check, okay? I'll tell you exactly how many words it is. Just give me one moment. So paragraph three here is 62 all together. And body paragraph two is... Uh, 110, so that's 160, and the last or the first one here is another 50. So it's about 215 words, okay, total. Now, that's good if you want a band 8 or a band 9. So, I'm, of course, I'm showing you a high band example here because the minimum is 150. So this is about 213 words. Okay, you can definitely write that in the 20 minutes as long as you know what you are doing. Remember, the question says 150 words minimum at least without repetition. Okay, if it's 150 words but you're repeating the same information, that's not good. All right, it has to be unique. Okay, it's 113 words, Pachu, so a little bit overguessed. Okay, so around 200 words is okay, right? For band eight, band nine, about 200 is what you should have in mind. Students, that is it for today's general IELTS letter writing. Uh, make sure to check us out on our websites. This is our general IELTS website at gieltshelp.com. Click that big red button and join this happy family on your adventures to getting a high IELTS band score and pursuing a wonderful life in another country. It's a valid and uh, valuable goal. I can only support it. Keep up the good work. Uh, remember that your brain is a supercomputer. It's a learning machine, so believe in it, respect it, use it. And uh, now I will be teaching a reading in 30 minutes on our Academic English Help channel. You're very welcome, uh, Pachu. You're very welcome, Farheen. Nice participation today, students. Good work. And again, check us out on our websites. Join us there. Bye for now.